Hello and welcome. Today I want to talk about a work belt that I've been working on and it's a work in progress for my volunteer activities with the fire department and specifically this is for writing in the EMS apparatus and it's a starting point for me as to what works and what doesn't work when I'm writing as specifically an, an attendant. So I don't have too much experience right now and I am currently learning what works and what doesn't. So here I have a belt that has a few different things. It's not going to be the final product and I don't always carry everything on the belt at the same time depending on the situation. So I'll start off with what's on the left here. I have my Yaesu VX7R radio. This is a quad band radio and this is my daily EDC radio. So I carry this pretty much everywhere I go and I program many frequencies into it and it is a very rugged piece of equipment. It's small. It has multiple powering options and things like that. I have a dual band antenna on here for 2 meter and 70 centimeter. So VHF and UHF. So it falls in line with some of our comms in the fire department. We use VHF and UHF and also a little bit lower than 6 meter bandwidth or ba wavelengths on the 6 meter band. So we're just right below that basically. So this can receive dispatch. It can interoperate with the VHF units and the UHF units in a pinch if I need to. So that's why I have it on here. Uh, this does for reference 6 meters, 2 meters, 1.25 meters, and 70 centimeters. It also has wideband reception, AM as well, and FM broadcast stations and shortwave reception as well as weather frequencies in it. I'm not going to go into too much more detail with this other than that it's super rugged. I've talked about it many times on my channel and it is one of the best waterproof outdoor type of radios to use. Moving along, I do have a couple different Leathermans on my belt, which I'm experimenting with. The first one is the Leatherman Surge, but before I get into that, I want to go over to the accessory that I have in the outside pouch. I got this from Killzone Flashlights to review, and this is their AAA Killzone Flashlight stainless steel light. It takes one AAA battery and or a lithium ion battery, a 1044, 3.7 volt battery. It does not have low voltage protection. It can get up to a bright lumen output with the lithium ion one. Uh, I forget the lumen output for that, but the rechargeable nickel metal hydride battery in here goes to about 50 lumens and runs for about 50 minutes or so. And it's a relatively small profile format. It's one button operation, tail clickly switch. So it's very basic, very straightforward, has a decent pocket clip on it and it unscrews in the rear here and it is waterproof. It has a Nietzsche 519 4500 temperature rated LED inside of it with high CRI rendering. So the reason why I'm running this with this kit right now is to try out and see how a high CRI light works on my belt kit. And it fits nicely into the elastic webbing on this Leatherman pouch here that has the surge in it. I have another side here where I could fit another item in as well. So I keep that on there. It's a simple clicky switch light in case I can have to hand it to another teammate or member they can use it there's no weird modes or anything like that so it's very straightforward so opening up the pouch here of the Leatherman Surge I have the spare or rather the optional T-shank uh, file that comes with this I have the sole installed on this one so I keep it in a little pouch in the Leatherman pouch here and this is an, an extra piece that I have it's a lantern holder this thing has a lantern hole in it but I have an external piece I find that's pretty useful in that configuration. So I won't go to too much depth. I'll just go over the tools on the Lemon Surge. You can tell what kind of blade you have by feeling the texture on the side here. This is the straight blade here, all one hand operation. Opens up all the way and it locks. All the tools lock on this. So it's fairly useful to use. And we do have a pair of scissors and that are actually pretty decent and good quality for a little bit more medium duty tasks. So I fold that back in. On this side, we have our serrated blade and we have our T-shank adapter with the saw install, uh, option installed. This comes with a saw and the file, three-sided file, 
And that is it for the outside. On the inside, we, we have our typical needle nose pliers, or somewhat needle nose here in the tip. Regular pliers here, 154 cm wire cutters here. And we have our wire crimper and cutter on the bottom down there in between here. And we can pull out and fan out our other tools. We have a all with the sewing outlet. We have a big slotted screwdriver here, a small slotted screwdriver. And on this side, we have our combo can opener, bottle cap lifter, wire stripper, and our proprietary bit holder for Leatherman, which is their 2D bit holder here, which we can interchange. We have the Phillips one currently on this one. And then on the sides of the handles, we have our measurements, rule measurements, which can come in handy in a pinch. And that is pretty much it for the Leatherman Surge options. Very heavy duty tool, gets the job done. And the reason why I carry it is because sometimes we might have to use a little bit more force with operating and doing things. It's basically just a tool belt that instead of carrying and going back to the apparatus to get tools, I have something right then and there. It's not a replacement for an actual tool. It's just time saver, which can be important. Moving along, I do have another tool I haven't reviewed yet, but this is the Leatherman Rescue Raptor, and it's a common one in the EMT world. So, very easy to deploy. I have it in the case here. We have ruler measurements here. It is serrated here on the blade, so it catches cloth material a little bit better, a straight edge on this side here. You do have to get this sent out to get sharpened to Leatherman, I believe, if it gets dull. We have a ring cutter here. I don't know if you can see that, but that will cut rings, which we typically carry a separate tool in the jump kit for that. And here we have a locking O2 wrench and a strap cutter, which I don't pr personally use myself, but it, the option is there. And we can close this up and go ahead and point out the tip here for glass breaking. I typically don't like glass breaking like that but the option is there again and then we have a little lanyard holder there for the raptor shears and it fits nicely in this case that comes with the raptor shears so i've been having this on the belt it's very convenient if not a little bit bulky but we do have a pocket clip here too which you can just put into your emt pants they sell specified pants sometimes for emts and i think this might be able to fit into that pocket some pockets might be a little bit too small for this so keep that in mind so that's the Lemon Raptor Rescue. Uh, again, I'll probably do a full review on it later on, but that's what I'm carrying and experimenting with. It has come in handy on a couple of calls with that O2 wrench. Sometimes our O2 wrenches don't always fit all oxygen tanks, so that O2 wrench has come in handy. Next up is sort of an experiment. It's the Lemon Crunch. I've talked about this many times. Basically, it is a portable pair of locking pliers. I'm not sure what kind of uses I might need for it, but having a somewhat complete, not complete, but a versatile tool set on your belt, even if it is compromised, is a good idea. We have our plier head here, smaller one here. We have a groove here for smaller items, bigger head. And then we have our cutters here. In the center, we have wire strippers. And we also have in this side here, which all the tools also lock, we have a file here. This is a three-sided file, single hatch on the bottom and cross hatch, and also the tip can be used as a slotted screwdriver as well. We have a lanyard holder here, and then we also have a smaller slotted screwdriver. And then we have a 3D Phillips head screwdriver, and then we have some more items. We have a sheet foot serrated blade on this one, and if I can access this one without getting cut, it's kind of hard to get some of these out without fanning out all those, the other tools and a medium sized slotted screwdriver. So we have all these different tools on here. Not that I need them, but it's nice to have as a redundancy for the main tool. And we have a pair of ruler measurements here in centimeters and in, in inches. So I have that to work in conjunction with the other pliers so I can hold something and then tighten it. So it's very useful to have a combination of tools like that especially with two of them where you can hold down one thing and turn with the other so that can be kind of useful in a mechanical situation now moving along from the leathermans and these items here the next item i have on here is 
sort of an EDC experiment that I've been trying out. This is the Maxpedition CAP admin pouch. And as you can see, it's fully packed here. And I wanted something that could fit my phone and my EDC wallet and my keys in and be somewhat size efficient, which this isn't really, but it works well on the belt in case I don't want to carry a sling pouch on my persons when I'm riding in the apparatus. I just want everything on my hip so I can carry the jump kit on my back. This allows me to do that. It's not as maneuverable having stuff hanging off your side, but in a pinch, I can just grab this belt, put it on, go out the door, be ready without wasting time. And that is the idea. And again, I'm still experimenting with this. So let's get into it. On the outside, we have laser cut, I guess, Molly Pals type of webbing ports here. And in the back, we do have more laser cut Molly Pals webbing. It comes with included straps here. And it is integrated, so I have it hooked onto the belt here. We have D-rings here on both sides, on the top and on the other side, so you can carry this like a sling pouch if you wanted to. And a little grab handle, which is a nice piece of webbing that's been rolled up. And we have two different pockets here. We'll go over the outside pocket here real quick. On the outside pocket, I have a notepad, and I have some spare cartridges I believe not in this pocket, but in the other one, but basically I have some spare cartridges in here along with the notebook to facilitate my pen in the EDC pouch here that I carry. And this is my EDC wallet and it carries a bunch of mini pieces of gear. Notably, I have a mini booboo kit in the front, extra cash here and I'll open this up. I'm not going to go over it, but I talked about this wallet many times. This is my EDC wallet it has a bunch of EDC items that I would use in a normal daily situation. So that is the Roaring Fire Pico Fire EDC pouch, which I use as my wallet. And that sits in the front pouch here. Moving along, I can show you what the pouch looks like in the front. We have webbing arrangements for this. It has these drainage holes at the bottom. So if it gets wet inside, it can dry out and drain out water. We have a slip pouch, which holds the little notepad that I might use to write notes on. And on this side, we also have some more webbing as well. I don't know if you can kind of see that on the video there. So moving along to the other side, this bigger pouch, I have my keys in here. Again, I have my Victorinox Midnight Manager with the red LED in it and a backup pen and some scissors and a small 3D Phillips head screwdriver combo tool. I have my Olight i102 EOS. This is the second version, not the Pro. A little bit smaller, micro USB recharging. My keys, my key fob for the car and a fob for the firehouse. And this is the rest of the pouch on the inside here. It has another drainage hole at the bottom. We have two big loops here, two big loops here, slip pocket here, slip pocket here, which has my extra ink refills for the refined P1 pen. And this is a pouch which manages to fit my phone here with the extended battery, the zero lemon battery on it. So that's important. So it squeezes in there, it's tight, but it works fairly well. And in the back here, I have a little loop here to attach a keychain if I want to. And that is the Maxpedition CAP admin pouch in gray. Next up is an optional pouch, which I usually include if I don't want to carry a core kit with me. And I just want to have it on my persons. This is sort of designed for mostly backcountry hiking. But it has uses in non-wilderness areas as well. I have a small carabiner here, climbing grade one. On the top of the handle here, I've wrapped paracord 550. And then I also have a small hank, about 15 feet or so, of survival cord. This is seven-stranded cord along with fire wicking strands, a fishing line, and a sewing line in it. So I have that as extra quarters to use in case we need to have some kind of tie downs or whatever. And this is the VanQuest PPM Husky. And I've had this for a very long time, for about four years now. On here, I have an s binder clip on the zippers here. And what's nice about these two pouches, I forgot to mention with the Max Edition and also this, is that they're inverted zippers. Now, why is that important in my particular case is that if there's any sort of fluids or mud or rain or whatever, it's less likely to get into the pouch and contaminate 
what I'm wearing because I am on an EMS apparatus and cleaning this makes it makes cleaning this a little bit easier and de decontaminating it a little bit easier. So that's important to note. But moving along, we can unclip this and open it up. And once again, this is designed as more of a wilderness kind of core kit. I do have my Victorinox signature light on here in case I don't choose to carry the admin pouch. I still got sort of a core kit with me that has a cutting tool. I have a Leatherman P4. This is the Leatherman Squirt. So it's the plier based version. It's a mini pliers. So once again, I have smaller pliers to get into places that the bigger pliers may not get into. And that could be useful. I have a lighter here. I have an Olight AAA light I3T with a diffuser on it. I have a mini headlamp, which is Nikkor NU05 in case my main one stops working or I have to lend a light out. I still have a backup one or something to lend out. And then there's pockets that go the gamut of this entire pouch. I'm not going to go through everything in here, but just some of the basic stuff that we're looking at in the front here. We have a whistle here that has a reflecting mirror on it, and I have a primary reflecting mirror for signaling as well. I have some signaling tape here for the woods in case I got to mark a trail. Lip balm, hand sanitizer, a Olight i102 Pro Light. This is the newer upgraded USB C version. Charging cables, paper clips, hair ties, zip ties. We also have safety pins here as well. And more zip ties, brush, glue. Underneath here I have some water purification tablets, etc. etc. And over here you can kind of see this orange holder that's a small feral rod for starting fires and i also have matches in here waterproof starproof matches and birthday candles underneath the webbing here so there's quite a few items in this kit basically this is a small what i would i don't want to call it a survival kit but it helps me extend my time out in the woods if i need to and it does have several items that work fairly well outside of the woods and that's why we have it on the belt now i can take it off very easily which is why i prefer these carabiner systems as opposed to the molly straps which i have in the back here on the molly pals webbing on the rear of the pouch because i can easily take it off give it to somebody or if i have to ditch my belt for whatever reason i can still take this off and carry it with me along with my radio and maybe a multi-tool so there's a lot of different options and customizations and once again this is not like set in stone i want to reiterate you know this is not a kit you should try in your own uh, experiments. It's just something that I'm trying and figuring out, and it's an evolution. So it's a place for me to study and begin from with what works most efficiently as a volunteer. That's all I have to say. Uh, I want to thank you for watching and enjoy your day.